Hello everybody and welcome to my heirloom organic vegetable garden series for November the 13th and this will be the final episode uh, for this year. It's time to dig out the parsnips. We've been having lots of cold weather. I'm noticing uh, that the, I'm getting yellow leaves so they're done. Um, you know there's still some of them that are green but we've got you know yellow and the purple happening and uh, they, they, they're finished now. They're not, I've already dug up a couple. They're not very big but I'll throw the, uh, the pivot heads on here and we'll do uh, the harvest and we'll see what I get out of my uh, my parsnips, which you know, really, this is the second batch, which was I think almost 30 or 35 days after I planted everything else. I had to replant this row, so really, you know, they're 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 really a month early as far as growth is concerned. But they they have gotten hit lots with frost, and uh, you know, if they're going to be sweet. They're going to be sweet, but uh now it's now or never really basically guys but uh they're not growing anymore and we've got some you know really cold weather nothing's going to happen here uh minus five and that kind of stuff ground starting to get really cold so let's dig them up once i get the parsnips up i can uh take all my wire down i'm gonna just leave the posts in i'm uh i'm a little bit behind i got other things to do totally forgot uh about the rutabaga update here guys the rutabaga is um it's rotten it, uh, it it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it still grew, but look at it. And they're all like that. The, uh, you know, this one's, yeah, it's rotten. See, it's, you can, it's actually, it's hollow. So the, they've got a really nice rutabaga smell to them, but they're rotten. They uh, rotted right in the ground this year. That moth bug, whatever I had, like look at them, they're all hollow, like coconuts. Yeah, it's really a shame. Like there's a really big one, but it's hollow, hollow as could be. Yeah, actually look at it. Actually take a look, guys. Hollow. Nice big giant rutabaga, hollow. So they're all uh, the same. What a shame. That moth bug, whatever it was, really uh, did them in. Just let them rot back into the ground. All right, let's get some parsnips dug up here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, they're not very big. They're tiny little guys. And they're rubbery. Oh, that's no good either. Like I, like I said, they're uh, they're really a month early because of, you know, I had to replant them. Yeah, they're not even hard. What a shame. Well, I'll eat them up and see what I get. I don't think I'm gonna have enough to freeze. Yeah, they're yeah, they're not hard at all. Usually they're really, really hard. Well, I'll keep digging here and we'll see what we get. And the because of the germination rate was really bad this year because the uh, seeds were too old. I did not know that uh, parsnips have a really short shelf life when it comes to their seeds. So I've got to order some this year. And I get these from uh, uh, Cottage Gardeners. The only thing I buy from them. These are the uh, Harrison. I think it's Harrison or... Oh, I can't remember the exact name. I'll put the link below the video. Yeah, look at that. That's sad. Not a very good deal this year on parsnips, and I love parsnips. Actually, parsnips, guys, uh, number two vegetable for me. Carrots are number one. Yeah, they're not very good. What a shame. Well, that's all I got out of one row. Well, the first row, not much. Slim pickings, I won't be freezing any. I think I'll just be having a lot of roasted parsnips here for the next two weeks. All right, start the second row. This is not looking good. Oh man, depressing. 
It's always the vegetables that you really, really like that bomb. Well, I shouldn't say that because my carrots rocked this year. I got a phenomenal carrot harvest, so yeah, 50-50. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why I hate putting the collar on Doug. I'm in the garden working, and he is uh, sitting as close as he can to me. Won't leave. Instead of running the bush like he's supposed to be doing, uh, you know, if I take the collar off, he goes and runs the bush and patrols the property. But with the collar on, he thinks he's in trouble, and uh, he sticks close to me. Not doing his job, just being a pet. Poor Doug, he's so confused. But he's very aware of what the collar is though. They're basically all about this size. I think I've hit maybe, maybe a half a dozen decent sized ones. And lots of that kind of stuff too. And I thin these out so that they would actually have a chance of developing. I don't know how they got so twisted up like that around each other. Not many. If I am going to be doing any blanching, I won't be firing up the industrial barbecue set. I'll probably be doing her in the house. It'll be a small blanch job. Actually, they're, they're actually some of the biggest ones I've gotten so far. I'm being supervised by Doug. And this is the last one. Oh, two. Like I said, I... Uh, I thin them, so I don't know how these happen that we got them, these little ones growing tight against big ones. Basically, one and a half pails. Ah, one and a quarter pails. Probably enough to do a small blanch. Dougie, you really hate that shot collar, don't you? So, that's it right there. Not much. So when you uh, parsnips, if you start them, um, five, well, I think about 35 days, 32 days late, that's what happens. And the only reason I started them late was because the first batch of seeds didn't germinate. Nothing like working in cold water when she's only 3 degrees Celsius. Whoa. Also, nothing like getting sprayed when it's 3 degrees Celsius. Well, that's it for parsnips. Not many, actually. Actually, not many at all considering I've had some huge crops over the years. But I'm going to have roasted parsnips tonight. And I'll give you a shot of what they look like. See if I get any of that, uh, that syrup in the bottom of the pan. See if they're, if they're sweet, I should get the syrup. And they have been hit with frost enough that they should be sweet. Well, I've cleaned up a little batch here for myself uh, for supper tonight. I had a bite of one and it tasted like carrot, guys. I can't believe it. I, I've... And, and another thing too is like they're very firm when I'm cutting through with the knife, but almost hard in the center. Like the, it's unbelievable uh, how when I was pulling them out of the ground, they were they felt soft, but they're not. They're rock hard. But I couldn't believe, um, like I, I couldn't believe how they tasted like carrot. And raw, they're sweet, not bitter. This is going to be really interesting. Um, what they're going to taste like when they get cooked up here. But I'm not putting any um, uh, uh, honey on them, uh, duck fat, nothing. I'm going to cook them dry just with some salt and pepper and uh, we'll see how they turn out. I'm really curious on uh, if we get the uh, that molasses type um, sweet sauce on the bottom. I just can't believe how they taste like carrot. They're so tender. Tender but firm. They remind me of a carrot. Well, I screwed up. I um, I cooked them for an hour and five minutes, and I shouldn't have. I really should have only cooked them for maybe 40 minutes. A little mushy. They're not. They didn't have any syrup. They're very dry. Very similar to a potato type texture, but definitely tastes like parsnip, but not sweet which is bizarre considering how many times they got hit with frost. Just haven't duplicated that one year that I got them really sweet that, you know, I had that molasses syrup come out of them when you roasted them. But they're still really tasty. It's really good actually. But I overcooked them. But I think a lot of that I screwed up is because I'm used to always cooking frozen. And these were fresh. Uh, tomorrow night I'll try it again. If it turns out better, I'll show you. If not, I'll just eat it. 
bottom line though they rock they're really tasty actually I didn't cook enough 